20% increase. I always wanted a thing called tuna sashimi. Three, two, one. Tuna back again. Um, this time we got a hard review on the PlayStation TV. Uh, my mate was very kind enough to bring his PlayStation TV up to me and uh, let me use it for a week and see what I think of it, see my thoughts. And doing this video, I'll show you a bit of gameplay and stuff, and then I'll give you my thoughts of what I think of it as we're going along. Um, my mate, when he sent it to me, he said he was a little bit, he was undecided whether it was actually worth the money or not. But um, we'll see, we'll see. Right, so, move the box out of the way, because you know, it's a box box, but there's the PlayStation TV unit. As you can see, it's very small, very sleek, quite nice looking for what it is. Tiny little black unit. Um, there's nothing on the front apart from a Sony logo. Um, on the side, then, there's a PlayStation Vita slot. So, in there, you can actually put PlayStation Vita games, which sounds pretty cool, but we'll go a little bit more into that later. Um, if you actually look on the actual back of the unit, you've got your power socket, you've got a network socket, so you can hardwire this. You've got your HDMI socket, you've got a USB socket, which can be used for um, charging uh, USB pads and stuff. And you've got a slot there, which is for the um, Vita memory cards. Uh, Vita memory cards are a little bit expensive, you're talking about 25 quid for a 16 gig one. Um, this unit comes with one gig of internal storage which is not great. You, uh, you fill up that one gig pretty damn fast. So um, that's the actual unit. Uh, the unit comes with your yeah, HDMI cable. I got the, It does come with power as well, which is actually just plugged in over there at the moment, so I haven't taken that out. Um, also comes with this, which is a free game download. Uh, so it gives you a code to download uh, free games. I don't know whether you can see. Uh, you get Worms Evolution Extreme, you get Velocity Ultra, and you get Oli Oli. So you get free games out of the box, like, so it's not bad, and you can fit your memory card in there if you need it to be. So you get free games out of the box. Uh, the unit cost uh, £45, and uh, Sony were telling it to, to do a few things. Um, mainly, you would consider buying one of these units to stream gameplay from your PS4 to another TV in another room in the house. This is what's only idea with this machine is. Um, not only can do that, it can do things like you, you can browse the net on it, you can get your emails on it, you can play PS. Uh, P games, you can play PS Vita games, you can play PlayStation 1 games, uh, you say you can stream stuff from room to room, it's got a media streamer on you, all sounds fantastic in a little box for 45 quid. But we'll get a bit more into that now, so we'll uh, cut by you and then we'll uh, cut to it actually running on the screen. So uh, I'll be back in a second. Right then guys, we've got this thing actually um, plugged in. Uh, we're pretty much ready to go. The uh, thing I'll mention about this is that uh, to use this actual unit, you need to have a DualShock 3 or DualShock 4 pad, because pretty much that's the only way to actually use this unit. Um, so that if you don't own them already, that's a bit of an extra cost. The unit, say the unit itself was £45. Um, if you have to buy a joypad on top, you're talking 40 quid for a joypad at least on top. Um, and then the possibility of uh, a memory card on top of that because you need more storage than you actually get at the moment. So, uh, but you say you need a DualShock 3 or a DualShock 4 and once you sync them up they work perfectly fine and you can charge off the unit. So, this is the actual front end of the unit. If I can get my pad to put back on a second. Yep, it's on right. This is the front of the unit. Uh, this is this is pretty much the same as the PlayStation Vita menus. <coughs> on here, you've got your PlayStation Store, which you sign in with your own account. Um, there was one problem with that I found that you can only store one account on this machine at any one time. Uh, problem is that if you put more, if you want to put another account on you, what you have to do is completely wipe this unit and put it back to factory settings, which is pretty crap 
Uh, so my mate's account was on you. I couldn't simply just swap to my account. I had to totally wipe the unit and put it and restore it back to factory settings, and then put my account on you, re-download everything. So when I give this back to him, I'm gonna have to wipe it and put it back to factory settings again. So that's a bit of a that's a definitely a markdown on that, which is a bit crappy. But anyway, there's your PlayStation Store. When you do actually sign in, you get all this stuff. So if you've spent the last couple of years on PlayStation Plus, queuing up all the free games like I've been doing, and just leaving them queued up, you'll go on here and you'll find everything in the list. So um, I'll show you the store. Sometimes I find the store doesn't load very good. It sometimes crashes when it loads, and you have to keep trying to refresh it. I don't know why it does that. Right, so this is the store. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is the same as the Vita store, but because I haven't actually been on the Vita, um, you get your games and all that type of thing. You got your latest games at the top. But to get your list of games, you click on this and then you go to download list. I do have a fair amount of stuff in my download list, so sometimes it doesn't work. All right, there's your download list. It tells you everything that can be played actually on the PlayStation TV and everything that can't. It, you can't actually download, can't it be download, can't it be download. Um, what I found is that a lot of the Vita games, they don't work on you. I think there's maybe a third of the Vita games you can actually use on you because of the touchscreen controls. Um, most of the PSP games I've actually got on my account, they all will work on you. Uh, same as the PlayStation 1 games as well, you can download them and play. Only problem I find with that is that the, I, the PlayStation 1 games are all PAL, so they're all slower and a bit crappy, which to me is really annoying. I hate PAL. So I wouldn't actually use it for playing PlayStation 1 games. But anyway, guys, that's, that's pretty much how the store works, as you can see. So we'll uh, cancel back out with that. To cancel out, you press the PlayStation button. This is a bit annoying. You can't just press B to cancel. You've got to hold it and it like tears it back like you were swiping the screen. So this is the actual browser. And uh, yes, you can play YouTube through the browser. Uh, browser is a bit like the PlayStation 4 browser. Really. You can move around with the analog and all that. But if I click on that, bit of retro court. Can't fall retro court, guys. If um, you like retro videos and stuff, check out his channel. It's very, very good. But as you can see, YouTube videos play fine for this device. No problems at all. Um, same with the cancel. Cancel, hold down the button tear it back. Uh, that obviously turns the machine off. Uh, you can link your trophies to it as well, which you use that. Uh, this is your friends list. Um, this is everything you've got on your PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 will show up in here and you can message back and forth. Uh, this is the message app, which just does the same thing. Uh, party chats, you can actually do party chat on this piece of device as well, which is quite cool. Um, you got your PlayStation link. Uh, this is where you connect your PC and do videos. Um, if I quickly connect to my PC, what I found with this is you can set this up. You've got to download a little piece of software that goes to your PC. Um, what I found is it picks up my videos, but literally only about five or six videos will play. It it's pretty rubbish as a media streamer. See, it's d disconnected now. Anyway, it's pretty rubbish as a media streamer. It doesn't pick up hardly anything on my PC and play. So, if you had any ideas of using this machine to media stream stuff to another TV, give up on that now. It's just not going to work. Um, music app does exactly the same thing. Plays your MP3s and stuff off your PC. That actually works all right. That will pick up all your MP3s and it'll just play them. So we'll cancel that. Uh, so if you go to the next screen then, same with photos, that'll connect your PC and do your photos, that works perfectly fine as well. Um, it's a little bit slow though when loading up photos I find, you get really blurry photos and then they kick in after. Uh, next thing you see the email, it's actually got an email client on this so you can set uh, your email and it'll actually get delivered to the device. Which is a nice little thing, I say if you've got this connected to a TV in another room, um, it's not bad at all. Uh, it'll pick up your calendar as well off your off your email as well. Uh, that's your content manager. That's stuff on the actual machines. So you can wipe it on and off. It's got parental controls. You've got all your settings in here. If I go into here, this is where you set up your network. You do system updates. You connect to what devices are connected to it. 
see wireless controllers you know bluetooth that type thing um set up your sound and display it does 720p this device but it will do 1080i but obviously 1080i is like sort of not really 1080i it's not running at 1080 but it um it, yeah 7, 720p is what the resolution you're going to get out of here or 1080i um this is where you have to format your entire system you've got to do a full restore this system to change accounts which is a pain in the ass and your power saving uh, things um this is where you get down into the meat of the thing this is where i've got actual games on this system uh, and you can so what we'll do we'll start off with a we'll start off with a, a minis game so this is the playstation minis these were on the psp if i remember right and on the ps3 but um you can download them and check them on yeah i've, I've tried a few games out and i just thought i'd leave these ones on here just for examples of what uh, what it runs like what i what i found uh, yes yeah, it's a psp game um what i found with these is that they the, the actual downloadable games run perfectly fine i got no problems on they were quite nice for the dual shock free is what i'm using at the moment see so if i go to temple What is quite impressive the PSP games they actually look they actually look pretty nice upscaled They're actually pretty cool indeed as you can see I have no idea what I'm gonna do in this game all ah, right you've got to build up blocks so I don't know exactly where you're going to do it finish this so a puzzle game hey you done level one but I say that's a PSP game so we'll cancel that um, so we'll get on to let's try a PlayStation 1 game this is uh, a Robocod so this was uh, an Amiga game originally, came out on the uh, Mega Drive and things like that, but um, I did a PlayStation version. So I don't know whether this game is running at 60 hertz, but it does do full screen, which is a bit weird. But I'm assuming it's not going to be running at 60 hertz because uh, I didn't have enough room on the memory card on it to download something that I know. To really test that out but um because you're limited to one gig pretty much my memory card's full already so this is where a little extra expense comes in with this machine that you need to at least spend about another 25 quid on top of that to get a 16 a 16 gig card and preferably you'd want a 64 gig card but i think they're way expensive this is the PlayStation version of Robocod so we'll uh... these games seem to run perfectly fine scrolling is not super smooth but I, I haven't actually tried this on a a PlayStation to see the sort of uh, differences to be honest but yeah it just seems to run all right and it controls quite nice with the uh, DualShock the DualShock works perfectly fine uh... So these are all these are all nice little uh, features. This is like an upgrade to the game with some nice music and stuff on it. But yeah, so the um, the downloadable games seem to be perfectly fine, and it's it's quite cool. You've got a chance to download download games, you know. So that's Robocod. So we we'll cancel that. I won't do too much of gameplay because otherwise uh, this is going to get very, very long. Um, so what we'll we do, we'll do another PSP game. This is uh, Super Stardust. This is a pretty cool PlayStation 3 game and it, it just got released on the PlayStation 4 as well. Um, PlayStation 4 one's really sweet. But 
PS3 versions are that far behind it to be honest. What I've noticed as well is loading. It does take a little while to load games in. I thought it seems to say external storage, it would internal storage, sorry, that it'd be a little bit faster. But you can use your analog controls. Basically, this is a pretty nice game on the PS3 and PS4. But I uh, say this, you know, I'm quite impressed with the PSP versions. They actually look really nice in 720p, the PSP games. This device is it's pretty nice for playing them. The only thing I would say is they're the they tend to be pretty pricey on the store. You still pay quite a bit of money for the games, so that's another thing I would say about th this machine. If you if you are relying on buying games off the store, it doesn't make it doesn't make playing games on this thing cheap because the store is not exactly the cheapest thing in the world. You got play PlayStation One games going anything up to sort of eight nine pounds. PSP games that go up to about 15 I think maybe more and um, the Vita games can be up to 40 odd pounds so playing games on this having this as a gaming device is a bit pricey you I think you would be better off buying the actual machines and picking up set cheap set man games off eBay but saying that you know PSP and 720p on your screen that, that's pretty cool like and it, it as you can see it does look pretty nice Right, so that's the PSP. I say I'm dead. So we'll cancel that. So now we'll move on to the. Um, I say I'll show you. I'll show you this tech. A TXK. I think this is a Vita game. I'm not entirely sure. As you can see, this is basically Tempest. I know the guy, Lamasoft, the guys who made this, are having a bit of an argument with Atari at the moment because they tried to release this on the PS4 and things like that. And Atari's kicked up a fuss because they're saying this is like Tempest. Jeff Minter actually made Tempest himself, but I can I, I can almost see I can see Jeff Minter's points on this as well that he made the game and this is you know it's not Tempest, right? I suppose it is. But I can see Atari's points. The Tempest is still made by Atari, and I can, I can, I can sort of see why they were a bit pissed off. He tried to re redo it and get paid, at, you know, release it on the consoles and earn money off it. Like I, I can sort of see their point. But there's probably a lot more to that situation than I know, and I've read. So, but it's cool that Jeff Mint is still around. He's a pretty nice guy. He made some classic games. But you can see this is a pretty cool game. So that's that. You see the downloadable games, as you can see, they, they you know they're very, very nice. Right, this is um a Vita game. Uh this was a game on the Wii which I really, really enjoyed. And I gotta admit, this is a beautiful looking game on the Wii. It's made by uh, Vanilla Way that always make fantastic looking 2D games. Um, but yeah, this is the Vita version. This actually apparently does run at 720p on the Vita. So we'll just get into the opening act. So here we go. Yeah, this is my character. And this this does look very very nice on you. I don't know whether it would it would say that it actually looks much better than it does on the Wii through component, but it does look very very nice. And this is a beautiful looking game anyway. Really stunning animation, two D drawings, and 
Yeah, it's a really cool game as well. It's got some interesting combat as well. And say the Vita games you can actually play on this machine do play really well. But uh, I'm not sure the exact number, but I'm sure this like a third or half of the Vita list won't work on you at all. Which is a little bit of a shame. Yeah, I say it looks very nice in uh, upscale or 720p if it's native, I, I can't remember. But it looks very, very nice. I'll get outside the forest now and you're going to... It's a good game, this is as well. I do want to... I played it uh, on the Wii and finished it and really enjoyed it. It gets just nicer, it just gets more stunning and stunning looking as you go along. It's nice to play it on you without waggle controls as well, which is uh, pretty cool. Plays fine on the, on the Wii U, like, but on the Wii, sorry, not the Wii U, but um, can be a little you got to hold the nunchuck and the uh, the remote. Actually, you play it on the pad. It's pretty cool. I say if you ever get a chance to, you know, have a look at any of the um, Vanilla Ways games, they're, they're very good. And comp with that guy before he dies. As you can see, it's pretty. It looks really, really nice. So that's um, Muramasa. This is a Vita game actually running on you. Uh, unfortunately, I have I don't own actually any physical copies of Vita games, so I couldn't try the slot. But from what I've seen, it just works the same. You just plug it in the slot, and it comes up, and you play it like so. I don't, so I'll cancel at that. So that's the games. Um, I could show you Fez. It's pretty much just looks like Fez on the other consoles. Very nice, plays well. Um, yeah, so that's all the little features you can do and stuff. So, well, we'll get to what we'll do now. We'll get to the point of what you can actually do with this. But the whole point of this machine was you link into your PS4. Um, before we link it, I will explain that there's three ways to actually link this to your PS4. You can either link it through your wireless network, which is standard fare, which is pretty cool. That little device has wireless as well. You can you can wire it into your switch or your router straight to your ps4 as well which is nice to have that options or which i thought was quite clever you can actually connect it wirelessly straight wirelessly straight to your ps4 so you don't actually need uh, a router you don't need a network connection if you had a ps4 and no internet you could connect it straight to your ps4 anyway just by using the wi-fi the ps4 got which is quite clever so what we'll do is we'll go in now and we'll uh, connect it to my ps4 I've tried doing this all three ways and I end up with the same problems and issues that I'll go into now in a second once we connect. Right then, so this is my PS4. As you can see, I've got my name on the top, which is uh, great, but there you go. Anyway, this is a PS4 and you can play all your PS4 games. So if I go to Street Fighter, and what we'll do, we'll kick Street Fighter up on you. I've tried various games um, and I come to the same problems on all of them. With this device, the one thing you would buy this device for, or well, the reason for buying this device is remote play to a different room in the house, your PlayStation 4. Uh, problem is, it's incredibly laggy. I, I mean, there's half a second of delay, roughly on everything you do. It cuts your PlayStation 4 down to 720p, which is fair enough, and it does cut the frame rate down to 30 frames. But it's really laggy. And I, I, I've i had two, I, like at the moment, I've got it connected 
to my monitor so I can see the screen on my monitor now and I've actually got it on the TV and uh, what I find is that there's half a second delay there's a massive delay between press pressing a button or whatever and actually what happens on screen but strange as it is if I can look at my PS my uh, monitor now my, with my PS4 control it with my DualShock 3 through the PlayStation TV to my PS4 and there's literally no lag but looking at my TV where the picture's been streamed to there's about half a second of lag so this comes down to my one problem with this device which is one of his main selling points that it's pretty much unplayable it's so laggy it just makes playing games really unplayable you can you can like just trying to do fireballs is really difficult I tried a jump kick then and I've tried various games on this but if I play that um, looking at my PS4 I can literally play like I would if I was doing with a DualShock 4 so the controls are not lagging the actual picture is lagging my mate who lent me this as well said exactly the same thing that he wasn't sure whether it was actually worth the money because he found that he was getting a lot of lag through the controls and he didn't like the device and I can definitely confirm I've tried it wirelessly I've tried it wired I've tried it connected straight to my PS4 all in the same room my, my route is in the same room so I'm just literally connecting it through and it's pretty much unplayable it's so laggy it, it's terrible it just the only people who would probably be happy with this would be little kids that didn't really know much of a difference just to keep them happy and not being on the same TV in the living room as their parents but I do I, I can't recommend this 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 device for doing this at all it's so it's terrible I tried playing um, destiny on it and I uh, I died so much because I just it's uncontrollable same with this there's so much lag going on you can't time any moves so difficult just to do something simple and this is where we get problems with this device this is where this device really falls over is you would buy the PlayStation TV because of the remote streaming features that's the whole point of buying this device and you get you playing games off the store is like a, a nice little second but it's terrible it's, it's it is unplayable I just would not recommend it at all for that and I think at the price it was, it's, the price has been reduced. It was £90, this unit was, and it's been reduced to 45 And I, I have heard rumours that they, they're discontinuing it. But at 90 quid, this this unit is, is a massive rip-off. Because you would have to buy the unit, you'd have to spend 25 quid on a memory card, and unless you've already got one, you'd have to spend £40 on a joypad as well. And, you, and you, the price of the machine then is running up, but you, you may as well just buy yourself a PS3. Or buy yourself a second-hand um, PSP, a second-hand Vita, and play and a second-hand PlayStation, and buy games and that, and you still save yourself money. Um, at forty-five quid, I would say it's useless, completely useless for the um, streaming. But you can play if you're willing to buy games off the store and pay a little bit too over the odds for them. All right, maybe it's maybe it's worth it for doing that but I'd only say it's worth it for doing that if you already had a PS, uh, PS Vita memory card and you already had a DualShock controller if not this becomes so expensive you may as well just buy those consoles second hand yourself so what I'm going to do now I'm going to go back to my live screen So I'm going to go back to the actual PlayStation TV now and cancel the, the Vita part out of it. So, this is going to come down to my thoughts on this machine. Um, at £90, the original price this was, it's definitely not worth the money and definitely not worth buying. I would say a 45 quid, is still not worth buying. But if... If you just wanted something to play on another telly, you fancied playing PS1 games, or 
you know, PlayStation Vita, some PlayStation Vita games or some PSP games, and you were willing to spend 10 quid or whatever per game off the store and buy a memory card and buy a joypad, perhaps it'd be worth a few, but I don't think it's worth it at all. But the price this is going to cost you to buy all that, you may just buy a PS3, second hand PS3 or second hand Vita, and you do much better using that. Um, so, PlayStation TV. I can't recommend it. Playing some of the Vita that games seems fine. They work really nice, but the media streaming is terrible. The uh, internet actually works okay. Um, the bit where you've got to wipe this machine completely to put another account in it. So if you've got like a American or a Japanese account and you want to put those games on it, good luck. You have to wipe the machine completely and start from scratch again. Um, it only comes with one gig of storage, which, as you can see with the few games I've got in here, I've run out of storage already. And I haven't downloaded anything there that's pretty massive. And a lot of the good Vita games are, you know, a couple of gig each, which is going to be no good to you because you can't use it unless you buy another you buy a Vita memory card. So PlayStation TV, I did try very hard to like it. I was quite interested to give it a go. But all in all, it's a bit crap, and I can see him just getting rid of it, and I can't recommend it to anyone at all. So, I'm trying to say something nice about it, so I just wouldn't recommend it, not worth buying, stay away from it, keep to your PS4, keep to your PS3, or if you want to play Vita games, buy a second-hand Vita, you're probably better off doing that. So... And hopefully not to upset anyone who's actually bought one and may have liked this, but I haven't found this a good device at all. So I'm going to put the thumbs down for the PlayStation uh, TV and recommend that um, don't bother buying it. Streaming is awful. So anyway, guys, I'll uh, catch you again and I hope you liked the review. And um, hopefully I get another game. I'll try and figure something to uh, do a game review on this weekend as well and get another video up for you. So catch you again. Catch you again, guys. Bye now.